you know, there's been this idea that maybe Bitcoin's held up and it has uh, slightly better than, than some other things in what has been a, a, a volatile period. It's sort of a short period. So I don't know how much I'm supposed to take away from that. What about you? Well, you know, it's uh, 126 days and counting. So, uh, you know, let's uh, let's give it a three plus months here for sure. And what that indicates uh, is that it is reflective of a really narrow range. Uh, as you've noted, it's uh, between 18 and 25,000. So that is significant uh, compared to how Bitcoin has been playing uh, in terms of the volatility narrative that we've seen in the past year. But as you know, uh, you know, over the past four months, we've seen rising inflation. We've seen incredible pressures on retail consumers, both from an energy and household level. And at the end of the day, when people are pressured uh, and seeing a macro environment in which their currency uh, is right. being eroded, this is a diversification uh, potentially play. And this newfound stability, if you will, uh, could also mean that uh, there, there is an opportunity here. Explain this one, though, to me. So 78% of wallets uh, with Bitcoin in them, apparently, like, the Bitcoin hasn't moved in, right. like, over 12 months or something, or maybe longer than that. W what does that That's suggest? Right. I mean, m maybe that's so, just to some long-term holders, but uh, is there something else going on? It, 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 you're absolutely right. It suggests that, uh, you know, uh, the misspelling, but it is a vernacular in the industry, hodlers. So you can realize your gains and you can realize your losses. You don't realize your losses until you sell. And so while a lot of people might have been going in, you know, in increments and potentially coming at the highs, they're not necessarily selling. So that's one thing. But we are seeing that addresses there have been stagnant activity, which means that uh, there, there is uh, not a lot of activity there while um, new addresses are being formed. So when you put all of those things together, it shows that, yes, this is still a very bearish market. Uh, there are indicators as such. The correlation between Bitcoin, right. crypto against the macroeconomic headwinds what, is very, Andrew, very clear. What do you see the ups... Uh, and I, I apologize for interrupting. What do you see the, the upside versus downside at this point for Bitcoin? What's the, what's the well, trading range look like to you? So I'm I'm not a trader, but here's the observations and here's what it means. Okay, so right now we're trading at a very narrow range, which means if you take a look at the the historic nature and characteristics of how crypto has been trading, right now we seem to be in a lull. There is a potential for explosive moves yet. Here's why. You've got a macro environment that is very, very pressured. You've got the Federal Reserve and then also around the world, central banks uh, trying to defend their fiat, yen, euro, pound, all under pressure. And then when you take a look at 2023, beyond the midterm elections for the U.S., already looking at 20 plus draft legislations on crypto regulations and policy language and stablecoin regulations, potentially, you're also seeing that regulatory announcements and indicators from some significant players. The UK this week said that it would include crypto as part of its financial services and markets bill, and that is very significant. This will be the first one post-Brexit. You have Singapore this week saying uh, essentially it's going to uh, take a look at the uh, stablecoin uh, uh, market right. and looking at the language there. And most significantly, I think, uh, ahead of Hong Kong FinTech Week, uh, along with Singapore, is that Hong Kong and the Securities right. and Futures Commission has indicated once again that there could be one country, two systems. Right. Uh, there could okay. be a divergence to China policy and perhaps welcome back um, some of those crypto businesses that have fled.